Welcome to the Drunkard's Path. I hope everybody had a great Canada Day and uh, everybody's getting out enjoying the beautiful weather that we're having right now. Uh, we just went through a wicked heat wave, but I'm sure we'll have a few of those throughout the summer. So on those really hot days, it's a good time to, to uh, get some sewing done. I've got lots to show you today. Um, we got a couple winners for our small giveaway and our big giveaway. And I also want to say, if you like everything that you see here, just give us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment, uh, something that's constructive or what you like, what you'd like to see. We would we'd greatly appre appreciate it. So I hope you stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to show you a tour of my sewing room. So I'm going to start right away with uh, the winner of the, um, the small, the small, I guess, uh, giveaway we have would be for the the uh, maple leaf wall hanging and that goes to Bonnie M651 so Bonnie if you could please uh, send a, uh, an email at support at drunkardspath.com and we will get your kit out to you right away thank you for everybody that left a comment and now for our big giveaway that we have this uh, 12 fat quarters of a Sherry and Chelsea fabric of strawberry lemonade and the other one is I think Seashore Drive. Angelus is posting our winner's name right here on the screen and we have your email so we will get a hold of you and get this out to you right away. Thank you again for everybody that supported us these past couple of months and be on the lookout for our next big giveaway. Okay, new to our shop, we have a few items that came in this week. Uh, three more bolts of Kona Solid. And these items you can find, of course, at drunkardspath.com. So go on the site and just sit back and enjoy and shop, shop away. This first one is a Kona Solid. It's called Midnight. And, oh, I just hold it up. It's a, more of a deep purpley color and yeah i really like a, a nice rich uh purple i really like this one our next one is amber so here's the amber kona solid our third one is called indigo there we go and i'm going to show you these three together because again these actually look pretty good all the, the three three colors three solids together so those are the new ones that we have in our shop now and we also have these really super cute mad for plaid bags so we have three new ones just they're the smaller version of the bigger one and these have come real um they're really handy for retreats or whatever you need to, a small pouch for this one is misty this next one is this one is called pumpkin and this one is berry i hope you can see through this plastic bag i can't really take it off but they're really super cute. I've been working on several sewing projects and this first one I got in a, in a box, the Liberty box from Fat Quarter Shop and it's just a little tiny small project and I did it within an hour and it's called Sparkle Star and this little wall hanging mounting thing, I don't know what you call it, came in the box and this is the actual little block and you just put binding around it and you put a a little hanging sleeve on the back and this is what you get so what's great about these see this thing comes off like that so you can change it up so summertime you can put something in the fall uh christmas so you can just keep changing up these little blocks like i said it only took me a tops an hour to make the whole thing from start to finish so what a really super cute idea so if you ever come across something like this pick it up and then you'd be surprised at all the fun little blocks that you can make and decorate your home with and while I am really excited because I finally got finished the Riley Blake uh, block of the month for 2023. I only did 12 of the 16 blocks only because I ran out of fabric. I was getting down to just about nothing, but I got the, the 12th block. I, I did it this morning and then I put the whole quilt together. And this last one is by Amy Smart and it's called Moab. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, that's what the block looks like. Now I'm going to hold up the whole quilt. The block that I just completed this morning, I'm going to go, ugh, I'm going to go like that, show half. This is this morning's block. And this is the bottom half of what the quilt will look like. 
So you remember me showing me each of these blocks one by one. I just think this looks so, so pretty and so summery and fresh. And I can't wait to get this one quilted. And let's go show the top half, which is kind of like exactly on the, the bottom, is just kind of like flipped over to the top. So these are the other six blocks. So it's just a different layout of what you can do with uh, 10 and a half inch blocks actually any size but I like this layout because it went together so fast you just sew them all together so the 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 strips and then go opposite and do that side and this is what you get so off to the quilter this one goes now I show showed this quilt last time as I had it all put together that is the jelly roll um, block quilt that I made at the red, white, and blue one, but I just got it back from uh, the quilter the other day to uh, Wendy Doran again, yay, bravo, did an excellent, excellent job. Uh, I have not finished the binding on this, but I just wanted to show you her, the great um, quilting that she did. Like this is actually, this is a big one. And you can see, and I'm sure Andals will zoom in, we've got stars and kind of like these swirls. I just think it looks so nice. I just like white thread, which is kind of like blended in the background, but it just looks so pretty how it's just, I don't know, just the way it, it just kind of flows and it just brings out that kind of like a, you know, red, white, and blue theme with the star um, quilting in it. So I am really super happy with that. And I'm going to put a red binding on this. So this is the last you're going to see of this one, but I think, yeah, the red will really make it look good. Thanks again, Wendy. I have been super, super busy cross stitching. It's just cause it's nicer out and I can sit out in, in the backyard in the gazebo and I've got a TV out there and it's kind of like my sanctuary. So it's, uh, it's just an easy thing to do is you bring out your project bag and you can just sit and stitch away to your heart's content. So I actually have quite a bit done. Uh, I was working on the free pattern by a uh, fat quarter shop called Spooky and Sweet. I have just about the whole thing done. Uh, this came out um, in weekly uh, segments, I guess you call it. So you did the border and then you did the little ghost and you did these other little uh, candies. And then now I'm going to be working on the little vampire ghost that's down here. So this is my progress on that. Isn't that cute? I just think these little ghosts are just the sweetest little thing. So I'm not sure how I'm going to fully finish this one, but I'll come up with something. Oh, actually I did think of something. So yeah, I'll have, hopefully the next video, I'll show you how it's, I put it into a piece that's all fully finished, but I really, really, I just love this one. It's so cute. It goes hand in hand with the, uh, the sew along as well. Next, I worked a little more on that, um, the what is it called uh, bouquet of roses uh, that my son got me for Mother's Day so I got a little bit more done of that and this is my progress I had that flower and now I've got I've added that one onto it so I think I spent about a night or two doing doing that so I'll just keep working away and maybe I'll have it done by Christmas I got quite a bit done on my Halloween Quaker so I think I had almost all the way across I am completely all the way across from one end to the other. I finished that motif here, the uh, the one with the candy corn, the one where the skeletons are, that one's almost completed. And I think the bottom corner goes just a little bit down further over in the bottom right there. So this one is taking a bit of time, but wow, I think this looks really, really super nice. I can't wait to get this one done, but uh, again, it does take a little bit of time, but it's worth it. Again, with the Fat Quarter Shop and their free giveaways, uh, the Moonbeams, they had given uh, the border, this section, this one here, and this was the, th let me see this, one, two, three, four, and then they have one more, which is the other side of the bird over here. So I have completed that section. So I'm going to show you, oh, I don't know if I ironed this one. Maybe I didn't. Uh, this is my progress on this. I just, I think it's just a, it's so nice and bright looking with the, instead of the dark blue, I like this more of a teal blue, tealy bluey green, I guess. So I have one more section to do when that comes out next month and this one will be completed as well. Just a little while ago, I, I sent away for these, uh, these cross stitch 
Halloween books. There's one from, I think, 2022 and 2023. And uh, they have, oh gosh, I think well over 100 different uh, cross stitches that you can do. So this one is definitely, um, you get your value for your money on something like this. Anyway, I was just going through it. I wanted to get one that I could do fairly quick. And this is the one that I chose to do out of this book so far. Anyway, I plan on doing a few more. And what I did was rather than just stick with the colors that they gave me, because um, this is, I think, more of a gray fabric, but I didn't really like the red. So I just kind of changed it up a little bit. I have it about halfway, a little more than halfway done. I just used this color instead on this fabric. This is kind of uh, like a taupey color, but it's got modeling through it. And I did, I changed the branch to like a greeny color and the, and the moon and the bat, I've kept pretty much the same. And it's got two red eyes that go in it, but I really love the look of that. It, I, don't, I guess it would be like a frame more than anything. It just kind of maybe like an old fashioned mirror or something, but I really like that. So this one actually went together. I think I, that was only about two days worth of cross stitch. So I'll get that one done pretty, pretty quickly. I've got two finishes here for the cross stitch. This one I used with the uh, It's So Emma Be In My Bonnet stitch cards that Lori Holt puts out. I'm in the subscription for this. So uh, it's a really cute little butterfly. And I, again, they're just small. Cross stitch is very quick. I think it takes about, well, it takes me about four hours to do one. But I thought, what can I do with this little guy? So I ordered all these little small mason jars. They're just tiny. And I don't know if you've ever heard of an ort jar. I had to look up that word because I thought, because I hear the cross stitchers talk about this ort jar. So I thought, okay, so I'm going to order these little jars and I'm going to keep my orts in it. And an ort is, um, it's an old German word for leftover. And what they're talking about is your leftover little pieces of floss or threads. And uh, cross stitchers just like to save them. So I thought, just store them in these little jars like this. And what I did was I put the cross stitch on top of the jar. So what I did was after I was done, I took a, a circle template, which was probably about a good inch bigger than this. I mean, it did cut off part of the border, but I'm okay with that. And I drew it, uh, the circle around and then I cut around it. And then I did a running stitch all the way around. And I took the lid of the, um, of the jar, like the, the, the mason jar, and I put it on top, but before that I, I put three layers of batting behind it. And I put one, like the, the exact size of the top, and I made it a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller. And I just put a little hot glue to hold it in place. And I put this on top, I did my running stitch and I pulled it nice and tight. So I had that perfect circle. So it was super, super easy to do. And when I did that, then I just threaded it through uh, on the back all the way through just kind of to, to secure it and tied it off and then just put a little bit little bits of the hot glue underneath so it, it stayed in place and put the screw cap on and this is what you get if something is just so small and simple and easy easy to do and you can put like ribbon on here and you can put whatever you want inside the jar of course like candies or uh, maybe colored buttons or just something to make it look um, pretty and you can give these away as uh, little gifts as well okay my last finish here is the patriotic quaker that i showed you that i had completed and this is what i did with the patriotic quaker i ordered this little antique box off of amazon and i just mounted it on top of here so it just kind of uh i don't know it gives it a little um a little pizzazz the box itself so i just um used some batting underneath of here and i kind of hot glued the the fabric to the to the uh, cardboard that I had the cardboard and the batting you just kind of lay it on top and you just kind of glue the edges down and I just kind of to get these corners to go nice and square looking what I did was because it because it kind of makes it kind of wide 
if and then I just took a needle and thread and I went behind and I just kind of uh, stitched and pulled it so it made the the corners tight so I did that in all four corners so it looks just a little bit neater and a little bit more square so it didn't take me long to do that but it was well worth uh, that extra time and then inside this box I just used some matching fabric and I just did the top and I just again did on the bottom piece too so when you open it up it's not just plain looking so what I use this for is I have all my classic uh, color works um, flossed and I just put it in here and uh, it just makes it just a prettier little box to, to store that in so this is my finish uh, with my Quaker uh, my patriotic Quaker Okay, we're just adding a little segment here because I just finished my spooky and sweet uh, quilt wall hanging that uh, Fat Quarter Shop is putting on. It's a completely free pattern on their website. So if you go to your blog, to their blog, and uh, you'll see the spooky and sweet, and you just click on that, and you'll see there's about I think four different segments, and you just download them. And I'm going to show you my completed. A wall hanging. I didn't go for the square one. I went for the very long one that goes uh, on, a on a door and it is so darn cute. We just got it quilted by Wendy. Wendy Doran Doran quilting. She did that for me. So this is, it's quite long so I'm gonna have to show you in stages. Isn't it so cute though? The little ghost with the the, the quilt blocks. Okay we're gonna go up and down here we have the vampire ghost. So this is it all put together. So I think this is, oh gosh. Well, I'm five foot three. So it's a little bit taller than I am. So this is the whole thing. And I'm really, really super happy with it. I just put the binding on this morning. So that's what we had to add it on. And you can go to drunkardspath.com and you can pick up your own kit. And this is all the fabric in there. And for $36.96, that's, quite a deal for all of this to make your own Halloween uh, spooky and sweet quilt. And now here's a tour of my sewing room. Welcome to my sewing room. We're going to start at one end and go right around all the way to the other. So this is where I do my sewing every day. Uh, I did have a space downstairs but uh, with the lack of light and my dogs they just didn't like going down there too much so I went up to the the dining room the room that we use maybe three times a year so I converted it to my sewing room and when we do have our, our uh, big family dinners everything has to get moved out but it's it's okay I'd rather be up here so to start with we have this nice quilt rack that my uncle gave me that I use for bigger pieces that I'm working on so we have here the spooky and sweet and this is the Sherry McConnell block of the month so I just lay them across here to keep them from getting wrinkled that comes in pretty handy and then I'll just I'll put a quilt that uh, well this is actually Christmas so I haven't switched it out in a while but I usually do switch it out so just to have something more a little more decorative in here but that is what that is for this is my ironing station. I have a fairly big ironing board here. I think it's a little wider than your normal ironing board. And I have my clappers, my um, wool mat. This is a lighter spray starch in this bottle. And this is the heavier one that I use. And I usually just cover this mat in a pillowcase. And I just put my fabric on here and spray it till it's nice and um, saturated with the, with the starch. And then I just uh, go hang it. I have a hanging area that I just put like a hanging rack and I just let them dry overnight. Here's my um, iron that I use as the, the Rowenta steam station, I guess they're called. And I've had a Rowenta in the past and for some reason they leak. But this one, because the reservoir is quite separate, that it doesn't leak. I really like the Rowenta because I like the steam and the steam with the, the, the felt mat. It does it a really good job, gets it nice and hot. So uh, this is my go-to iron is this one right here. And over here I have my little uh, trolley cart thingy. I don't know what the proper term is, but these are probably in most people's sewing rooms. They're very, um, they're very handy with the, the three layers, the three levels, sorry. And I just put stuff that I'm working on. I can just wheel it over to the sewing machine if I need it. 
And right here I have a little um, garbage can, trash basket, whatever you want to call it. Only dry things go in here that, um, that of course it will not, you know, get any stains or anything on it. Just uh, bits of fabric and, and cardboard and stuff like that. And I have a nice uh, wicker storage space down here where I just put some sewing notions and whatnot here. I keep this big jug of water for my iron because it holds quite a bit of water and rather than uh, going to the sink all the time and filling up a big thing I just keep it right here so I don't have to make that that trip every time I need to. I have my project boards that I use. I have them stored right here in the corner. And here I have a second wool mat that I keep over on the in the corner that you just never know this is the older mat i got a new one earlier but just in case i get you know spill something on it or whatever i have a spare backup right here and over in the corner here i have a nice cabinet that uh, holds a lot of things and at the top i have another project board and this has a project that i have in here that i'm doing some uh, paper piecing so like hand stitching so that's in that one over here i've got some christmas fabrics i like to use the bins that you can see through so you know what's in there and down to the next level i have uh, a lot of uh, these are like a neutral color of threads and here i have uh, some embroidery thread for the uh, embroidery module on my machine so these are like a halloween uh, color pack that i got and there's the bigger cones in here and I got this little basket here and inside of here I have the oh let me just get that there my alpha biddies I keep in here and I use those every time I do a new project and back here there's a little jar with some buttons in it and this thing here this is holds all my triangle paper and I've got foundation paper back here and some magazines in the very back, but this is uh, very handy so I can just grab whatever triangle paper that I need. And on the next two shelves, in these little storage bins, I guess you could call them, I have all my scissors and the glue sticks. Over here we have marking pens and some uh, other rotary cutters and one of those uh, seam rollers. So that's all stored in the these and next to it i have some dye that i use for cross stitch fabric another little tin can to hold some notions and i like to keep these are the smaller of the uh the patterns that i got in a uh sew sampler box so i just got the little binder and i put them all in the little binder so it's stored nice and neat over here are these couple little cardboard bins and i've got pins i've got some veldani threads here just just some notions um so, this is so so darn cute it's just a little mini uh cut and press mat so you can cut here and press here so if you're on retreat and you're doing this small blocks you could use this and some little spare rulers on the side down here i've got some fat quarters and some rick rack uh i have a couple of these that i made that i put some notions in here and this one I think this one's empty but I have just some uh, spare fabric that I have here some of these D rings that you use for bags and we have another smaller binder with all the the patterns in here here we've got some some more of the clear see-through bins of more fabric that I just stored in here uh, just easier to see it that way Okay, and on the bottom, we have this cupboards here, and inside here I've got a light table. And down here I have some tearaway stabilizer that I keep in the roll. Uh, just some rulers, some Lori Holt rulers here. And at the very bottom I've got here, I've got all my wonder clips and some spray glue and some pins for um, like quilting pins they're all in here everything's stored in a certain way so i keep it down there so i know where I to grab things some tins here uh, i've got a another one here that holds rolls of rickrack and down here i keep all my starches so we have the best press that's what i was the word i was trying to think of before was, was uh the best press i put into the spray bottle and then we have the other um 
heavier starches right there. Here on my big dining room table, I have several cutting mats. I have the big large one and two on the side. The smaller one is the rotating one. So I just put it here when I need to uh, trim up smaller pieces. This is where I keep my rotary cutter. I always keep the, the very large ruler right beside because this is the one I probably use more than anything. Then I have several uh, places to put the smaller rulers or the specialty rulers. They're all here. The little tiny ones here. So you got your two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. I got five and a half, six and a half, eight and a half, twelve and a half. Just anything that uh, makes your life easier in the, in, the, in your sewing room. So that is uh, most of my rulers and the cutting area. Okay, on the other half of the table, which is actually, it's a really big table, so I'm pretty lucky to have all this, this working space. I usually keep whatever backgrounds I need for ongoing projects, I keep them right there on the table and then I take them as I need them. I have all my bins of my working projects with the binders, with all the projects inside. They're all right here, uh, nice and close. And this, I keep a, another like a bin here that holds all of my um, scraps. This one is pretty much full. I'm gonna have to go through it and put it into other bins, but this is just one that I have that's right there. So I can just toss it in there, try to keep it as neat as I can. And over here is my quilting journal that I write everything down and take photos of and all the particulars of each project that I'm working on at that time. Over in this corner is where I store my featherweight machine. So I keep it right down here. I've got a chair over by the window and I have a nice big bin full of fat quarters all that I uh, was in a club that has um, a lot of reproduction type prints. This bin here, I keep mostly stuff that goes with my featherweight machine so I have it separate from my other machine just so I know where I can get it right uh, very quickly. Got a couple storage boxes here. They ha this one holds all the Lori Holt um, stitch cards and with some floss. Here's where I keep all of my uh, patterns. They're all in these little hanging file folders. So you can see I've got, uh, these are some Plum Street Sampler uh, cross stitch patterns. So everything in here is all cross stitch. I've got the fabrics that are in the, the back. So I go by color. So I've got grays and more beiges and pinks and whatever. So it's just easy to find them. And there is, I don't know if you'll be able to see in the bottom drawer, but I have also uh, things for cross stitch down there as well. So that's a nice cabinet to keep things uh, nice and orderly. And over here, we have some stitch bag, some project bags for um, cross stitch. So that's only a portion. I've got a bunch that are actually have projects in them. Okay. Over here, I have a DMC reproduction um, little drawers that hold all the DMC floss. So we've got up here where I've got some Aurifil and DMC. And in each one of these drawers has all the DMC flosses. So when I ordered this cabinet, it came with all the DMC floss there was. So, and plus I've added to it, so I've got duplicates and wherever I can pick it up. So each one of these, we've got all the different colors and there are a lot, <laughs> but you'd be uh, surprised at how quickly you go through them too. And I just made this little Dresden plate uh, table topper. So this table kind of matches the other one. Okay, and in this, I uh, got a matching table here that matches the other one with all the, the hanging file folders. This one here, I've got some quilting gloves and underneath here is where I keep all my jelly rolls and junior jelly rolls. They stay in the top because it's a, it's a shallower drawer. So push that. And then here we've got lots and lots of uh, fat quarters, fat quarter tower, another jelly roll, fat eights and some fabric here so this one i use for um finishes on my cross stitch and in the bottom we have more more fat quarters fat eights just another place to store my fabric and right beside here are some uh, pieces that go to my sewing table so I just slide them in there out of the way and over on this side I've got some uh, DMC um, Monaco 
in here so I just kind of stick it in between so I got a few rolls of that there and that's the stuff that I can dye any color I want over here I have a night another chest of drawers which you can't see but on top of it is a TV set where of course uh, no sewing room would be complete without a TV set to watch your favorite quilting videos and of course floss tube and this one I have I have charm packs I keep zippers some more fat quarters here another package of them uh, we have two different sizes of zippers in here so they're all in, in the packages and I've got some notions here I've got the um, to make ovals and circles and and I keep my cleaning kit so that's in that drawer this one again oh look at that more fabric there's a surprise right there's all different fabrics in here and on the bottom again we have more fabric so it's just a nice way to store all your fabric and if you can find a chest of drawers you're not using anymore that comes in handy and over in this corner I have this little uh, spool holder which I hold all of my bobbins and I've got a nice sewing basket here so I keep a lot of notions in probably all of my um, sewing needles and uh, tape measures and stuff like that go in here and down here I've got this little uh, Bernita stand that, that holds the, the feet, which they're probably half of them or, or more than that or, or next to my sewing machine. But this is where I store them normally. I've got a bunch of um, pattern books there and magazines in that section and down below you probably can't see that section I've got a whole bunch of embroidery threads um, I have I like using the big cones for um, piecing so I've got this one here and I've got more of a beigey one that I'm that I'm almost finished so I'll, I'll use the gray you can't see the threads anyway when because I use such a small stitch uh, length that you don't see the thread so uh, I really really like that uh, it's just way easier to use one great big cone and now over to where I actually do the sewing. On the far left, you can see that you can probably see part of the light. I have a nice magnifying fire uh, light there. And here's where my sewing machine is. And I made this nice cover for it using Lori Holt's, um, I think it's Farm Girl, one of them. I just made a couple of blocks and that's what it looks like, like that. And here is my Bernina. This is the 770. I've had it for I think about four years now. I really, really like it because I love the the knee lifter. I don't know what the actual <laughs> name is. Anyways, it just it lowers your um, your foot whenever you need it and it will raise it. So it's that is really nice. And this machine, this table, I think it's Koala. This one was, was made, you tell them what kind of machine you have and they cut that, um, the plexiglass bit out to fit exactly on your machine. So it has uh, a button over here that raises and lowers it for you for a, if you didn't want, if you want to have it up higher, then you just take that off of there and you raise it up and you can have it higher or lower or wherever is comfortable for you. So I really like this table and this whole table actually folds up everything completely folds up into a very small compact table. There's a leaf behind here that that will lift up. If I pull this table out, it's on wheels and that will lift up and I can have a, a much bigger space when I'm actually doing my quilting. And there's uh, a, the embroidery module is on the left. I'm not sure if you can see it in the camera, but it just sits there as a uh, pull out uh, drawer. And on this side, there's also, this is where I keep all the threads and this pullout drawer and here are the feet that I was saying and the stitch plate. So it's just kind of stick it in there and then we just pull it out of the way. And over here I keep my, uh, my little thing to catch all my threads. I just throw it in there. This is uh, my thread holder and this is my cone that's almost done. I have a, just a bit more to go. But that's how I sew. I just put it behind the sewing machine and thread it and just I don't have to worry about it. And over here we've got some smaller scissors or turning tool. Uh, of course stitch ripper. Yeah, hopefully we don't have to use that very often. Pins, little pair of scissors, everything kind of neat and off to the side. A little pin cushion. So that, in a nutshell, is my sewing room. This is where I spend a lot of my time. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you again so much for all your support. We are just uh, 
extremely grateful. Enjoy your summer and uh, until next time, keep sewing, keep stitching.